Fox950.com. All right, I'm told uh, what we're going to do, this is the debate for NY22. The Republican primary is June 28th, just around the corner. This is the first debate where each of the candidates has been able to get together and answer the questions, uh, face each other. And what I am told is there's a few issues that have not been hit on. Therefore, we're going to extend slightly, and everyone has agreed. Um, uh, Jeff Manaski will ask a question, and then each panelist will get one more question, which will take us uh, well here into the uh, into the nine o'clock hour. So let's start right now with uh, Jeff Manaski, whose question will first be directed to Assemblywoman Claudia Tenney. Oh, I have uh, so many more questions that I would like to ask. Okay, so um, let me ask this question. Uh, we, we've touched on health care just briefly. Can each of you outline your feeling on Obamacare, uh, whether you're repeal and replace, adjust what we currently have, um, and, and I'll, uh, it's a very broad question, but, but that is the topic, Obamacare. Thank you. Yeah, I would repeal Obamacare. We sent our current representative who promised in Tea Party rally after Tea Party rally that he would uh, repeal Obamacare, and of course he went down every time and voted for it when, it, when his chance to vote against it was, was occurred. Uh, occurred. Uh, Obamacare has been a disaster for our small business community, particularly our small business owner, our manufacturing business, of which I'm the co-owner, even though I'm, you know, Mr. Wells keeps saying I don't own a business. I've owned a business. I've been working in our family business since I got out of law school back in 1987. I even worked at it when I was 16 years old. Um, and we have grown jobs. I ran our family newspaper business. It's been a disaster to have Obamacare. So we must repeal it. I say, when they say replace, I don't want to replace it with something like Obamacare. I'd like to give us as citizens an option, something that we can have a portable option, something we can have insurance. I buy what I need. You, as in your position as a, as a young father, you buy what you need for your family. Uh, we need to allow our businesses to compete across state, across state lines, especially insurance companies. Insurance companies have been fine with Obamacare. We've hurt the small ones. We've taken millions in taxpayer money to help the big ones. Uh, we need to have an open market and a free market, which will bring the cost down and give more options for our consumers and give them a chance to have good health care which is what the goal is, not just to have affordable health care. Because if you have no access to health care and it's unaffordable, then you're not getting good health care. We need to empower our doctors and our individuals to provide their own solutions and to provide a free market-based solution. All right, uh, Stephen Wells, next on the question. Yeah, well, again, I think I'm the only one up here who has actually firsthand dealt with Obamacare, running a, running a business with over 1,000 people. I had to go and tell my employees, over 200 of them, that they were dropped from their plan, uh, contrary to what the president said, that, they're, that, that they're, they would be able to keep their doctors, keep their plans. That was an utter falsehood. It's not what happened. I knew when he said it, it was false. And of course, that's what actually happened. I've experienced firsthand, uh, over and over again, the problems with Obamacare. And the fact is, is that, uh, look, healthcare accounts for 17% now of GDP. It's a huge, huge industry. And the, 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 the problems, look, it was, it was ill-conceived to begin with. I mean, look, at you, you've got, I don't know about everybody else here, but I find it much harder to get into a primary care doctor. I mean, we added millions of people to the rolls with no plans to get do added doctors. This plan has got to be scrapped. It has got to be replaced with, with something, I would argue, as a business person that is far more market-based, more competitive, that will actually uh, uh, lower costs, uh, and we've got to move forward on it. But, you know, to hear the assemblywoman, maybe the reason she says now that she was running her business, maybe that was the reason why she doesn't show up for work in Albany missing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of votes. And um, in particular, in the, in the last question you'd asked earlier, she, she's, she's claiming to be so great about taking care of, uh, of uh, security on June 18th in 2014. Just to give you one example, she missed a vote that would let uh, police officers, retired police officers, uh, obtain a pistol permit in the same day missed a vote to create an advisory council to prevent future terrorist attacks. There's examples after examples of her not showing up for work. So I'm tired of the personal attacks that aren't true. And George Phillips. Repeal and replace Obamacare, absolutely. It's been a disaster. I've laid out a plan for a dynamic market of choice, more choices for all Americans. I want to talk from personal experience. We had a very hard decision to make as a family when we decided to run for this office. I took a leave of absence from my teaching job, so I've had to get health care on my own. I called Excellus and I said, I need the cheapest plan possible. And this was the private company. Guess what they were trying to do? They were trying to push me into Obamacare. They said, oh, you could get Obamacare. And there's a tax credit. It'll be a lot cheaper. And I said, well, someone's paying for that. 
And they said, no, 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 it'll be cheaper for you. And I said, yeah, but someone's paying for that. I don't want to be part of the problem adding on to the deficits and debt. $1,100 a month, $9,000 deductible. And they came back and tried to push my children into Medicaid as well. So they were trying to, even the private sector was trying to get me into the government plan. That's wrong. We should have choices in the private sector. And why, right now, under New York state law, are we spending over $50 billion on Medicaid? Why can someone earning $100,000 a year who has five children qualify for Medicaid? Why do we have more Americans in Medicaid getting better insurance than my family has right now? Why is the bureaucracy wearing us down? I went to a doctor's appointment with my wife recently. She was with a specialist. That specially trained doctor spent three quarters of the time filling out paperwork. Here we are, someone who has done amazing things in the medical field and very accomplished, and she was bogged down by Obamacare and big government. All right, uh, we have 45 seconds for rebuttal, and this begins with Assemblywoman Tenney. Yeah, I just want to say thank you to Steve for bringing up the issue of my vi miss votes on the Obamacare question because this is exactly what it goes to. Um, I live across the street from the house I grew up in. As a daughter, I cared for my, ca my aging parents and their death. I was my mother's executor for her estate. She passed away last year. She had chronic illness and she was sick, unfortunately, during session in Albany. But every single vote that I missed, live vote that was on the floor, I made up for with a paper ballot, as all members are allowed to do as when they cave, care for their parents. I don't think I would ever change that situation. If I had a choice of leaving my mother to die in an emergency room at St. Luke's Hospital here, or voting on bills that I could make up with a paper ballot with the assembly at 107 to 43, I think every, under, every person in this room and every person in our listening audience would understand you would be there for your mother, especially when you were her primary care provider. Also, my son graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy in 2015, 2013. All right. I missed a um, couple of votes there, and I made up for every vote. I've been okay. there for my constituents. It isn't just about voting in Albany. It's uh, about standing for you. us in every, every category. 45-second rebuttal, Stephen Wells. Well, with all due respect, uh, on that day on June 18th where she claimed she was taking care of her mom, which anybody would understand, my mom's... Uh, sick with cancer uh you know she was actually uh, down holding press conferences in binghamton not uh, two of them was not uh she was in the bob joseph show on the, in the studio that day when she missed 82 votes no i was not uh, okay well um she missed votes on june 2nd on veterans health care she missed five votes on june 10th she missed 30 votes on june 11th she missed 37 votes on june 12th she missed 22 votes on june 16th she missed 51 votes on june 17th 82 on june 18th 143 on the 19th 26 on the 20th back in march she missed votes and this year she's missed over 55 votes already so the fact of the matter is her mom had already passed away last year she's missing votes this year uh george phillips Let's do some more practical examples of how broken this healthcare system is and how we need a dynamic market of choice. I want to invite you all. Actually, I don't have money to pay for it, but I want to invite you all for breakfast <laughs> after this year. I want to invite you money for breakfast. <laughs> Can't we see the prices? How much are the eggs? How much is the special? If you went to a hospital or a doctor's office and you said, how much is this going to cost? They'd look at you like you were crazy. They just want a card here. We're dulled into experiencing, oh, that was, a, that was a $100 visit, but I only had a $25 copay. That's on top of the $18,000 I paid in a family plan. We need more choices in health care. We need more accountability. They're so bogged down with the bureaucracy in health care, we're losing patient care. And we see this in our doctors and our nurses. They're exhausted. They're doing all this paperwork. My best friend lost his mother. Why? Infection, going to a hospital. Yesterday, my mother was in the emergency room. They said, why don't you stay here for a few days and recover? And uh, my dad told me, thankfully, she decided to come home. Thankfully, she decided to come home. The infection, the disease in the hospital, the overworked workers, because of the bureaucracy, we need to do better. All right. Uh, the next question will be delivered by Alex Gerald of the Utica OD. And the uh, first person to take that question is Stephen Wells. Donald Trump is the uh, Republican nominee for uh, president. Would you vote for him, and why or why not? Well, what I've said from the beginning, and I'll say it now, is that, uh, look, whether he was your first choice or your last choice, uh, the bottom line is for, for where I stand, uh, he's better than Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders. And the reason why is because 
this country is going down the wrong road. Bernie Sanders represents socialism. Hillary Clinton represents and is and is a continuation of the track that we're on. The whole reason I'm running for Congress is to change the direction, to go down there. And I don't need to step away from my business with two little kids just to go down there and get nothing done. We have got to change the direction of Washington. We've got to get business people down there who understand what is required with common sense to grow this economy, to grow this upstate economy. That's what we got to do. We don't need more politicians that aren't getting it done. George Phillips. Three points on this issue. First, we have to be very aware of how the voters have spoken and how they're sick and tired of politics as usual in Washington. And this is what has put Mr. Trump in this position. Number two, while I personally do not condone and I condemn some of the incendiary remarks he's made, which even more, which is even more damaging for the American people in this country, are the policies of these last eight years with President Obama and the policies that Hillary Clinton would take into place. So the choice is clear, Trump versus Clinton, in terms of the policies that we need. Number three, I'm an American history teacher, and let's get back to the Constitution. I know the presidency is important, but the Founding Fathers set it up that the Congress was the most powerful branch. We're the most directly responsible to the American people. We have to go back to our communities every week. We have to go back for election every two years. Let's get the power back into Congress. The president can only sign or veto what the Congress sends him. And this is critically important at this point. I want to be a leader in the Congress on bold issues, on bold ideas. And sure, the president, we're going to have to work with him to get things done. But it's the Congress where the ideas come out of, the people where the ideas come out of, and that's what we have to get back to. Not this imperial presidency with Barack Obama, illegal executive orders on immigration, on health care, on this recent ruling for our schools, taking decisions away from Americans and assaulting the United States Constitution. Assemblywoman Tenney. Uh, folks, what you have right here is a first-class example of a pay-to-play, pro-choice politician he sounds like a politician and he's not even there. That's why he's backed by the establishment. Any person who would shame a daughter caring for her dying mother and caring and be attending her son's graduation as a single mom is shameful. And I, I condemn that. And in 2018, in 2014, in the last month of June, the New York State Assembly is the most dysfunctional legislature in the nation. We voted on 700 bills, mostly one house bills, mostly bills that ha are naming a highway, d bills that don't have a Senate sponsor. And as with all members of the assembly, I have one of the best records. I've only missed 3% of session days. Family emergencies and personal matters are forgiven and you are allowed to be excused. I made up for all of those votes with a paper ballot. My mother was rushed to the hospital and she was urgently suffering from her Coumadin overdoses, and we had to re adjust that. It was a health care problem. I raced back to be by her side on June 18th. I also was, went and drove back to the State Assembly on June 19th to vote on my committee votes, important votes that had to do with opioid addiction. I was there as long as I could, and I had to go back and be by her side. But every vote, folks, was made up for. I stood there for my family, and I would do it again. I did not meet, miss any crucial votes. All of those were made up for. And by the way, most of the votes that we vote on in the State Assembly have been voted on for decades. And that is why I propose cutting session in half, ending on April 1st, and yes, cutting legislators' right. pay in half. All right, Stephen Wells, 45-second rebuttal. Well, with all due respect, notwithstanding the name-calling, by the assembly women toward me, towards me. You know, the fact is, is that if we could throw out the entire year of 2014, uh, for which she's missed over over 480 votes that year. But the, how about this year? Just this year, she's missed two votes on January 6. She missed five votes on February 8. She missed 12 votes on March 2nd. 16 votes on March 17th. She missed votes in April. Every single month until this campaign got going. <laughs> she's missed votes. I mean, the fact of the matter, she's paid $87,000 a year for a part-time job. She's got a pension, and she doesn't show up for work. Pension. That's the fact. Uh, George Phillips. A friend said to me, did you hear about the latest survey? They took a survey, and they said, who would do better in Congress, the current members of Congress or a random sample of names taken from the phone book? Guess who won in that survey? <laughs> the random sample of names from the phone book. We need to lead on ideas. I'm going to challenge President Trump from day one. I'm going to say, Mr. President, think about 
upstate New York. Think about our towns that are struggling here. Think about the workers here. We need an upstate jobs plan. We need a scrap and reform of the tax code. We need to secure the border. We need to stop the heroin crisis. We need a dynamic market of choice for health care. We need to move from welfare to work and strike welfare from the U.S. code because there's dignity in work. We need to take on the Fed. We need to rein in spending. We are stewards of the taxpayer money. The American people put us here. This is a critical moment. Let's seize the day. That's what I'm going to say to the president, and I'm going to try to lead from day one. All right, Assemblywoman Tenney, 45-second rebuttal. Yeah, this is, uh, first of all, I supported Donald Trump. Um, I was a Cruz supporter. I was someone, at least he was against the establishment. He fought the battle. I didn't agree with everything that either of them stood for. But I admitted on this show, when you asked me, I said I voted for Donald Trump. Neither one of these guys would say who they supported. And the reason I supported Donald Trump is because we need someone to shake up the establishment and get away from what's been going on. Now, I don't love everything he says, but he stands for changing the establishment, and they're terrified. Just like the establishment is terrified in this race, they do not want someone like Claudia Tenney, who's a fighter, who stands for someone, something. They want someone that's going to be a Steve Wells bureaucrat who's going to follow the establishment. He's going to get caught up in minutia of one and two votes. The state assembly introduces 12,000 bills a year. We are wasting time with one house silly bills. When I can vote by a paper ballot and be with my family, I will do that every time. Okay, we're uh, going to do one more question. Uh, pose one more question, and it'll be from WTR's Mark Baracco. Uh, go ahead, you're on. Uh, and by the way, you're directing your question to George Phillips. All right, thank you, Bill. Uh, we, we, we can agree or disagree on certain things when it comes to education and testing and, and student and teacher performance, but I wanted to get um, your take on uh, one particular issue that I think everyone can agree <clears throat> on, and that is um, having the opportunity for students to get a lunch, a breakfast, uh, a lot of low-income districts, even in rural areas in, in, in the 22nd district, um, it doesn't matter the size of the school. What matters is there are still a fair number of kids who don't get adequate food, especially over the summertime and especially mm -hmm. over the weekend. How would you rectify that situation? Mm -hmm. Well, there is a government safety net here, but as I said, for too many families, it's become something that's trapped them in a cycle of poverty. So we're talking about one part of the problem here school lunches, which I would certainly support, but the larger picture is the United States economy and the economy here in upstate New York. We had 41 congressional districts in the 1970s. We're down to 27 today. It's been like a sieve. People are leaving here. Our national economy is in poor shape as well. We've got to get things going here again. We've got to scrap the tax code. A rising tide lifts all ships. If we have a better economy, more jobs, more opportunities, a scrap and overhaul of the welfare system, I think you're going to see this this school lunch program uh, really uh, done away with here to an extent, or you'll, you'll at least you'll have it, but it'll be much less. And it's sad in our communities here too that we have people from New York City coming up looking for a better way of life and shopping around benefits. We have to stop that. We need to get dignity with work and require work with welfare. This is the best thing that parents can do for their kids. Look at the welfare reform in the 90s that we've gotten away from. We had single moms going to work for the first time in in years, and look at the dignity that gave them in a role modeling it gave for their children. I remember that in D.C. public schools as well, and it was amazing. Some days in class, I only had young girls in class, and I wondered why, and I had to think and, and study a little bit. The young men often had very poor role models. Their dads were in jail. Their dads were in gangs. The moms were so many times there working heroically, raising a family in very difficult circumstances. So I think it all starts with work. And we're going to have more jobs available if we lift up the American experiment here, if we lift up entrepreneurs and small business owners through tax right. reform, through health care reform, through taking on the Fed. And that relates, I think, very well to the, to the poor school children that we're talking about. Okay, Assemblywoman Tenney. Uh, yeah, we do have a free and reduced lunch program in New York State, and we do provide some meals <clears throat> to our students. But you know, the problem is jobs. We need to have people give people a hand up, not a handout, and an opportunity to have jobs. And one of the things that I've stood very strongly for, and I've actually written a national in a national publication on, is the issue of trade. And I'm holding up something here that the radio listeners can't see, but the people watching on TV. These are the iconic brands that were once made by Revere Copper and Brass right here in Rome. Look at this, if you look at this brochure more closely, these brands are now made in China. They're, it's in Chinese. 
these things aren't being produced in our country because of bad trade deals. NAFTA and other trade deals that were not negotiated to help our manufacturing base. As the owner of a small manufacturing base, we need to provide people with an opportunity to get a job, not raise the minimum wage and put social workers and people on par with people that are working at McDonald's, but real jobs that are part of our manufacturing. We can bring those jobs back by giving Americans the chance to work and giving Americans the chance to sell our products overseas. Unfair trade deals have put our U.S. companies like ours who are dependent on these kinds of businesses at risk. I actually manufacture something. I don't know what Steve Wells does, but I know whatever it is, the government is giving in millions in contracts and he's getting to you know, benefit from that. We don't have that luxury. We don't have any government contracts. We rely on other independent businesses. And as they take their products overseas, we're gonna lose them. Providing jobs is the answer to providing food on the table for the kids in our communities. And that's, I support it. Uh, you know, trying to get jobs back here, that is really the only answer. All right, Stephen Wells. Well, I don't have, for the, about the fifth time, I don't have millions in government contracts. Uh, I have, uh, we do some vending machines at some state prisons that feed the guards and the people who visit prisons. Uh, that's, the, that's, that's the nature of our business with the, with the government. But the fact of the matter is, is if you want to create jobs here in upstate New York, it comes back to what I said earlier. We've got to have a competitive environment. Albany and Washington are in the way. They are not getting it done over and over again. You've seen we've, we've, we've got a tax structure that's not competitive. The assemblywoman voted for part of it, $1.9 billion. We've got a regulatory environment that is killing upstate businesses and farms. We've got to deal with that. Nobody wants children to go to bed hungry. We've, we've, there's no question about it. But the solution, we've, we've, just, we've just incurred $10 trillion in new debt in the last eight years, is what are we spending our money on? Of course we don't want kids going to bed hungry, but, we've, we've, but we've, we're wasting so many resources, so many resources. These, 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 many of these programs which were conceived with great ideas have been sadly run by bureaucrats that are, and politicians that are more interested in protecting their own jobs down in Washington or Albany than to actually serve the people. That's the bottom line here. All right, uh, 45 second to rebuttal, uh, George. The question was about government programs for children, and this is a very important office, and I appreciate the voters taking time to listen and learn and make a decision on this very important office. But one thing that we have to remember is ultimately the solutions aren't in government. They're in the hearts and souls of the average Americans. The solutions to these families here and their problems, so many of them, as I think back to my time in inner city schools and in a youth prison and the other students I've taught at high school and community college, our families, in our communities, in our churches. Great things can happen at church. I met my wife at church and we had a whirlwind romance. We're married and 10 years later, blessed with three boys. So it's our communities. It's all the other things going on. Let's not look at government as the end all be all. We'll do our best. I pledge to do my best. But ultimately the solutions are in our communities, in the hearts and minds of the average American. 45 second rebuttal from Assemblywoman uh, Tenney. Yes, George, you're so passionate about education. I hope if you don't win the congressional race, you stay with education. You're doing a great job for our children. But again, uh, you know, government doesn't provide the solution, independent businesses do. And uh, that's something that I've been fighting for as an independent member in, in, in the Assembly. I'm not part of the status quo. I'm not one of those people that went down and got the Republican Party behind me or the Democrats. I have both sides. I have independents who support me, who are against the status quo and support our children. And, and I fought against the bureaucracy uh, in Albany when they tried to take uh, benefits away from our school children. I support our schools. And I have a, a strong record of doing that. And uh, I've been recognized by, by many in the school districts for doing that. We know that we have to provide for our children. I just am hesitant to say that f the federal government is the solution. Jobs are the, are the solution. And finally, a rebuttal from uh, Steve Wells. Well, you, you, the, again, the question was about food, and there's nobody up here who knows more about the food service industry. This is what I've been doing for the last 25 years. And, uh, and since the assemblywoman said she didn't know what I did, uh, what we do is we feed people, we feed students, uh, we feed uh, upstate colleges, community colleges, and we feed corporations. So the issues of jobs, I've dealt firsthand. I don't have uh, one of my customers. I can't recall a customer right now off the top of my head that has more employees now than they did when we started. Um, and so 
Uh, there's no question about the erosion in, in upstate jobs. Everyone knows it is. The question is what we're going to do about it, and that's why we need business people down in Washington, uh, not politicians. All right, so uh, we want to thank you guys. Uh, this has been a long haul. We went a little over. But uh, you're each uh, awarded a two-minute closing statement. And uh, earlier, before we started, by a random draw, we, uh, we closing, uh, being, okay, we're going to Facebook Live the uh, <laughs> these closing statements. So, so many options for you to listen and watch. And, uh, I mean, it's just, uh, there's no way you could miss it. Uh, but we'll start by the random draw. Claudia Tenney will go, then followed by Stephen Wells and George Phillips. So, Facebook uh, Live, huh? Ms. Tenney, you're on Facebook Live as well. And... You are uh, you're on the floor. You have two minutes. Yeah. I just want to say thank you for having this debate. I thought you did an excellent job. I thought it was very fair, and I hope that a number of people tune in. Uh, this was a great opportunity for our voters to see just who's running for Congress, for them to know that there is one person, there is a clear choice of someone who's not part of the Washington established, not establishment, not part of the Albany established, someone who has been here fighting for us, a business owner who has jobs, who's been negatively affected by bad trade deals, who's been hurt by the SAFE Act and Governor Cuomo's progressive agenda, uh, who has fought against corrupt leaders like Ray Halberner's Grow Economy Pack, who's trying to suffocate the voters with a false information campaign uh, against me, someone who's cared for this community. I live in the house across the street from the one I grew up in. I'm here for our community. I've stood here strong. I've told the truth. The voters know it. Uh, I've taken a stand on many issues, and I'll quote Churchill, if you've stood for something in your life, that means that you, ha you have enemies, that means you've stood for something once in your life. And I have stood for these people uh, in our communities, and I will stand for the people in Washington because we cannot afford to have more Washington establishment people behind uh, my opponents, both are, are, are as they admitted, uh, have Washington ties, and uh, we need to have someone that doesn't have ties to Washington someone who's not going to be afraid to stand up and be an independent voice. I fought the SAFE Act again. I'm standing with Remington Arms employees. I have endorsements from the, the state conservative party, who's always been a voice of reason for our communities against when the Republicans sometimes don't stay on track. Um, it's worth noting they didn't endorse uh, Congressman Richard Hanna in his last two terms because he didn't stand up for what he said he would. Uh, I will continue to stand for this community, as I always have. And uh, I'm going to be the best choice. If you want to put an outsider in who's truly a conservative, who's going to defend life, I'm the person you should be voting for in this campaign. Thank you. Uh, Stephen Wells, two minutes. Well, I thank you very much for, for having me here and hosting this debate. And the fact is, is that uh, some woman is right about one thing. The voters do have a clear choice here, and, and that's what needs to be considered right now. Who do you want to send to represent you in Washington? And I would argue to you that the person who's going to actually have the chance for success in creating uh, jobs and wealth here in upstate New York is someone who's not been involved in Albany or, or Washington. I'm the only one here who's standing right here who's not worked in Albany or Washington. I have no connection to Washington. I have no connection to Albany. I'm the only one here who has actually gone out and done what's needed to be done, which is create jobs. We've created over a thousand jobs, over 650 here in upstate New York. I know what it, need, what it takes, and that is we need to reduce our tax structure to make it competitive. We need to reduce our regulatory structure to make it competitive. And the bottom line is, is we need people down there who aren't politicians, who've not been involved and not run continuously, but, but business people who actually have common sense to get government out of the way other than in places where it's absolutely necessary, such as national security and cybersecurity. Otherwise, let's get the government off our backs, out of our way, let the free enterprise system grow our economy. Thank you. All right, and finally, two minutes for George Phillips. I want to thank everyone who is involved with this debate here today. I want to thank especially our listeners. And I want to say to them that during these difficult times, we're facing a difficult moment, a critical moment in our nation's history right now. We've been through difficult moments before. And as a history teacher, I know that our founding fathers stood up and made bold decisions and helped get this country going on the right track. And it was a gift that we've given, this gift of freedom to the rest of the world. We faced difficult times with Lincoln and those of his generation stood up to the test. We faced difficult times during World War II and we're commemorating the 72nd anniversary of those men storming the beach on D-Day that helped liberate the world. 
this is an important election here. We have to have hope. We had a very difficult time in the 1970s, but then we had Ronald Reagan with a bold vision for America. That's what we need again, and that's what I've laid out with an upstate jobs plan, with securing the border and addressing the heroin epidemic, with a dynamic market of choice for all Americans, with striking welfare from the U.S. Code, turning it into work empowerment, bringing dignity to all Americans, scouring for waste through a Ronald Reagan-style Grace Commission, taking on the Fed and out of control Fed, taking on our enemies here. We can defeat ISIS. The Americans who did all these great things in history, they're our ancestors, their blood is in our veins. We can achieve greatness once again. I'll be a congressman who will defend the dignity of all human life. I'll be a leader from day one. I'll challenge the new president and the leaders in Congress. Some extraordinary things happened in this country throughout our history. And I think it's not um, too far out of the question for an ordinary person, an American history teacher, to get elected to the United States Congress. I'd ask the voters to consider me, to look at our website, phillipscongress.com, and see more on these ideas. We're going to win in the end as a people, as a party, as Americans on ideas. Thank you. All right, uh, George, George Phillips, Claudia Tenney, Stephen Wells, I want to thank the three of you because this is really what America is all about, right? You're making yourselves accessible to the public. And our listeners really, uh, uh, I, I can't say enough how much they appreciate the opportunity you guys have given them here today. So thanks so much for it. Good luck, all of you. I can't shake thank everybody's you. hands, thank but you, uh, best of thanks. luck. And thanks for taking the time here. It means a thanks. lot thanks. to this community. Uh, that's it. We'll rejoin regular scheduled uh, programs uh, coming up. I believe that would be Glenn Beck coming up in just a few moments. After we take care of a few brief words, this is WIBX.